They said that the price of freedom is constant vigilance. I say it is also the very price that we must pay to safeguard the rule of law today. Mr. Just Mr. Justice Bokhari warned of an impending storm for the rule of law in Hong Kong. In light of the recent developments, I'm sad to say that the verification of his prophecy is now painfully self-evident. Fifteen years after the handover, it is time for us to remind ourselves in this very chamber the cardinal principles of the rule of law, the common law tradition, the rules of natural justice and procedural fairness, due process, habeas corpus, an independent judiciary, access to court for all, and an independent legal profession. President, therein lay the foundations of the legal system we have, and I dare say of the fundamental pillar under one country, two systems, under the basic law. These very principles form the bright constellation which has gone before us and guided our steps through an age of transition and reformation. The Hong Kong people helped found this special administrative region. We've helped craft it, a constitution known as the Basic Law. And in this constitution came the powers that were bestowed on our government. We've made it an executive government subject to checks and balances. We've defined its authority. We've restrained it to the exercise of such powers as are granted to it by the law. And we've not stopped there. Who then shall construe this grant of power under the constitution who shall interpret this constitution? With whom do we repose this right of deciding on the powers of government? Are we at the complete mercy of state discretion and state construction of our constitution? President, if we are, then in vain will be our attempt to maintain and protect our constitution. In the constitution itself, a proper and suitable mode of tribunal for settling questions of law have been established. Article 19 of the Basic Law states, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall be vested with independent judicial power, including that of final judi adjudication. Apart from cases involving acts of state, defense, and foreign affairs, our courts have jurisdiction over all cases, and that their judgment shall be final. The, co the Constitution has itself pointed out, ordained, and established the authority of our courts. The rule of democracy, the rule of law and democracy must go hand in hand. For democracy may, may disarm an oligarchy, a privileged class, but it can still crush, crush individuals as merciless as any dictator can if we live without the rule of law. The rule of law is what makes Hong Kong shine as the gem under one country, two systems. The rule of law is what makes our nation not only great, but shall transform it into a good and moral one. Our present cause is to protect and treasure the rule of law in Hong Kong so that when the national impetus for change arrives, what we have in Hong Kong shall shine in the rest of our nation. This is the very task set upon us. Let us look into to our country and our cause and elevate ourselves to the dignity of pure and disinterested patriots and drive our country towards that of a just and peaceful nation. I know that there are many who believe that the time is gone when one can appeal to those high and honest impulses that were once the mainstay and the element of our character. Yet I believe it is a noble thing to have the opportunity to guide the development of our nation and to influence the destinies of our people if ever it was an object of honorable ambition, more than ever must this be so at the moment which we are speaking. This is an hour when the foundation of the rule of law is under threat from those who disagree with its basic premise. They are the enemies of the rule of law, and they represent the powerful forces that threaten what we hold most dear to our hearts. They are the soulless men who believe in nothing except the brutality of power alone without constitutional restraint. Whether this threat is real or imagined, as some would blindly try to argue today, we must nevertheless safeguard the rule of law with all our might and with all our strength, President. For history shall blame us for our false sense of complacency should we allow the rule of law to fade, to slip away, and to leave its foundations broken and unrepaired whilst under our guard. We must continue to provide ample resources to support the work of our judiciary and judges, to protect their status, to safeguard their independent judicial role. We must ensure access to justice for all, irrespective of one's economic condition, hence the need to continue to expand both civil and criminal legal aid. Justice ought to extend her protection with rigid impartiality to the rich and to the poor, to the powerful and to the humble. 
and likewise, the independence of our legal profession must also be guarded against any infiltration. A healthy and independent legal profession is key to maintaining the rule of law in Hong Kong. President, there are politicians in this council, men and women, who have looked with ambition to the honours of high public office. These are the same men who have now been pressed into a groove from which they can neither escape nor retreat, holding high public office but maintain there at the expense of their pre present convictions which do not harmonize well with their early opinions under a different role. May I remind those that the rule of law does not change depending on one's role or standpoint. The principles of rule of law do not change no matter where one is stationed in life. Be you now speaking as the chairman of the bar, the secretary for justice, a member of the legal profession, or an ordinary citizen seeking a day in court. No, the impartial and fair scales of justice do not change. President, I contemplate the progress of the rule of law in this nation will be slow and painful, but I look forward to it with perfect composure and confidence. For establishing the rule of law for our nation begins with upholding our constitution here at home by means of an independent judiciary and from a conviction of its benefit that will accrue to the great body of the people in this nation. I move this council to support the motion. Thank you, President.